Greetings. Today, we're moving on to another law, another gas law. And this time is Chucky's law. No, just kidding. Charles' law. All right. So Charles' law is, has to do with volume and temperature. But first, we're going to think about movement of particles and temperature. Remember, when you have a low temperature, the molecules are moving very slowly. You increase the temperature, the molecules move a little faster. And finally, you really increase that temperature, and those molecules are going in every direction. All right, so let's move on, focus on particles. All right, so now we're going to talk about temperature and volume. Temperature and volume, if you think about what we just said, when the particles are moving very fast, they're going to be increasing the volume because they're going to be going in every which direction. So that's the relationship that I want you to think about. It's a direct proportionality volume as temperature increases, volume increases. As temperature decreases, the volume decreases. And the graph for the, uh, shows you a direct proportionality in volume versus the mathematical relationship is V1 T2 equals V2 T1. But there's a catch here. We can never use Celsius when we're working with, with temperatures. We cannot use Fahrenheit either. The only one that we can use is Kelvins. So how do you convert from Celsius to Kelvin? It's very simple. You take the Celsius temperature plus 273 and that will give you the Kelvin temperature based on the on Kelvin scale. And the Kelvin scale, if this is zero, this is 273. So that's the proportionality plus 273 equals your Kelvin scale. Now if you're going in the opposite direction, you do the same but opposite. If you're going from Kelvin to Celsius, you're going to subtract 273 from your Kelvin temperature to get your Celsius temperature. All right, so these are these beautiful balloons. I would love to go on a ride on a hot air balloon. Never done it, but it's on my bucket list. Now, I'm going to show you how this works, how balloons rise. So what do they do? Basically, they heat up the air. As they heat up the air, what happens to the volume? Temperature increases volume increases. When the volume increases, particles are spread out. They are less dense than the air. All right, so what's happening here is that the air inside the balloon is being heated. When you heat up the air, remember, temperature and volume are directly proportional. So when you heat up the air, the volume increases. When the volume increases, the density inside becomes less because there's less gas molecules per unit area, but they're spread out. So now they become less dense than air and the balloon rises. It's the coolest thing in the world. It's a pretty simple concept, but it works very nicely. All right, so we're going to solve a problem. And we're going to start out with our formula, of course, and it is V1. T2 equals V2 T1. Now, let's write first, let's write the variables. What do we have? A gas occupies 7.91 liters. That's my V1. V1 equals 7.91 liters at 52 degrees. So my T1, my initial temperature, is 52 degrees Celsius. And it increases, the temperature increases, so my T2 equals 265 degrees Celsius. What volume will it occupy? So what is my V2 is what I'm looking for. That's my question mark. That's what I'm looking for. Now, first thing I have to do is to change my Celsius temperatures, convert them to Kelvins. And 52 plus 273 is equal to 3. 25 Kelvins. Notice that there's no degrees Kelvins, it's just Kelvins. 
and then 265 plus 273 is equivalent to 538. Now I'm ready to plug in my numbers as soon as I solve for my variable. What is it that I'm looking for? B2. So I'm going to come back over here, even if it'll be a little crowded, but I'm solving for V2, so I'm going to divide by T1, and I'm going to divide by T1 over here, and T1 will go away, and V2 will be my answer. So I'm going to plug in my numbers. V1 equals 7.91 liters times my T2 divided by my T1, which is equal to 325 kelvins. Okay, that's kelvins. Okay, how did I know that? I realized, oh, I have kelvins in Celsius. That cannot work. But I had converted it, but I had written the wrong. Um, uh, I had written the wrong symbol. So kelvins will go away, and my result will be my V2, which will be in liters. It is equivalent to 13.1 liters. So my V2 is 13.1 liters. That's V2. Pause in my answer, and we've got it. All right, so it's imperative that you write your units everywhere because this is how you can catch your mistakes and fix your problem before uh, you do it incorrectly. And over here, the most common mistake that students make is they put the temperature in the wrong place. They put T1 up here and T2 up here, down here, and then that just messes up everything. They get the wrong answer. So be meticulous about setting up your problem, your vari writing down your variables, setting up your problem, solving it uh, correctly one step at a time. All right, so I'm going to give you a problem to think by. Okay, all right, so I'm leaving you with this problem, and I want you to pause, solve it all out like I showed you, and then, and only then, move forward, and I will give you the answer. Have a great day. See you later. There's your answer. I hope you got it right. See you in class.